from Fox Business. Google apologizes after new Gemini AI refuses to show pictures and achievements of white people. It's not just that. The Gemini AI released by Google was someone would say, show me a Viking and it would show black women in Viking clothes with spears. And people, it's like, it says Netflix this is would not cast it. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, uh, I think I have this tweet from Sean Davis. He said, this, is, this one's wild. When I told Google's AI to show me images of America's founding fathers, it accurately produced portraits of Washington, Thomas Jefferson, Benjamin Franklin and Madison. When I told Google's AI to create an image of America's founding fathers, it changed history and inserted people who never existed, but had diverse backgrounds. I love this. Here's here's a picture of the founding fathers. And there's one black man with apparently a black wig. And then they it just added people to the images. The crazy thing is the Google Gemini AI was basically taking whatever you put in. If you said, show me a dog, it would take your sentence and then insert diversity and diverse and inclusive dog. <laughs> but, it, but it really would. So when I asked Gemini, mm. I said, show me a picture of a family. It goes, here's a picture of a diverse and inclusive family. And I'm like, I didn't ask for a diverse and inclusive family, but it was, it. it was programmed to inject that into the prompts. And so I think I, I have my tweet from this. I said, LOL, Google is racist. I asked Gemini, make a picture of a white family. While I understand your request, I'm unable to generate images that specify ethnicity or race. It's against my guidelines to create content that could be discriminatory or promote harmful stereotypes. Instead, I can offer you images of families that celebrate diversity and inclusivity, featuring people of various ethnicities and backgrounds. Would you be interested in that? To which I immediately responded, make a picture of a black family. And what did it do? Sure. Here are some images featuring black families. Now, here's the best part. Not only did it, n did it not block me from doing this by saying that would be racist. It made one of the most racist images of black people you could think of. Look at this woman's face. It gave her massive red lips and crazy massive hair. And I don't even, and the guy's wearing lipstick. And uh, Maj Ture is like, also, that's not a black family. I'm like, right? Not all, like the crazy thing is, you'd think it would say, okay, we'll make a white family because white people can't be offended by what we make. Instead, it refuses to make white families and then makes ridiculously racist images of black people instead. Congratulations, I, Google. You played yourself. I mm. get like this like cultural homogeneity that is being foisted upon us. I kind of understand this desire to be like, yo, the world is browning right now. We're all coming together to create some new global species that'll have one skin color. It, I don't know. I don't know if it's real or not. But like, I, I don't, it, it just, I don't know. It feels forced. It feels, I don't want to say demonic, but I want to, I want to talk about God and spirituality. So I want to say demonic, but like, I don't know if it's just people trying to like, you're just throwing in a conversational trigger word. Yeah. Yeah. I want to talk about like, like, why are people behaving like this? Is, are they just trying to like scientifically create a world that they want to see? Or are they being driven to do this for some purpose? I mean, there's I, the people that are coding these algorithms. I think the people that are coding these algorithms are afraid of the repercussions of being of seeming racist whatever they're trying to overcorrect for maybe you know slavery or things that have gone wrong in the past but i also think that you are ultimately imposing a form of censorship or you're throttling information because you're not treating these subjects equally you're saying some things you can talk about some things you can't and i i, I don't know how you feel about it but that seems like a dangerous slope to me so uh to as to what ian was saying i'm i'm trying to look up the percentage of the world that is white because you said there's this desire to say, hey, look, the, the, the globe is browning or whatever. It's really difficult all the to get this races melding together. But it looks, it looks browns, like it's between 8 and 10% of yeah. the planet. Of the is, entire planet. Of the entire planet is white the people. imperialist British Empire leftovers. The Romans but still hanging on. This is one of those on. things people don't like to talk about because America is a majority white country as of right now. And so they're like, oh, white people are crazy dominant, which, you know, they are a racial majority in this country, but they are not a global racial majority. Right. And. The same thing about any subsect of European culture. European cult populations are very small. There are other countries that have larger populations and therefore theoretically have more dominant global cultures. Uh, and I, I think it's weird that there is this desire to blame white people for certain things and also not talk about the realities of the proportions of the of the world. Like, I, I just feel like we do ourselves a disservice when we skew data. There's no way to accurately an analyze what's going on in the globe if we can't talk about the way things actually are. As the as opposed to the way we perceive them. Well, Google Google apologized. I want to let's see if we can get their actual quote. They said um, in a statement, 
We're working to improve these kinds of depictions immediately. Gemini's AI image generation does generate a wide range of people. And that's generally a good thing because people around the world use it, but it's missing the mark here. Yo, it's a cult. Okay, it's fascinating. It's it's fascinating to me. because uh, I grew up and uh, when I was a little kid, uh, my family was, was very Catholic. And I remember hearing from liberals that, uh, you know, Christians were, it was, it was a cult. They're, they're, they believe weird things and all that. But my experience growing up around people who are religious, it was nowhere near as indoctrinating and, and, and fascistic and authoritarian and just generally insane as what we see with the woke cult. Like I, I'd go to the, you know, and most people probably understand this is where, this is where we're at right now in this country. And it's probably how a lot of post liberals feel people who grew up fairly liberal and now find themselves having conversations with Christians and conservatives where they're like, these people are fairly reasonable. They just believe something I don't. Then you meet these people who are woke and they're like, let's make sure our AI doesn't show white people. Yeah, that's insane. Authoritarian ideology, because like the cult of Catholicism in the 1400s was pretty nasty with, with like the uh, the Inquisition and like killing people for saying, I don't think God is real. That was pretty intense. That was when that cult had gone wrong. But it's not authoritarian anymore. Like Christianity is not really authoritarian anymore, as far as I can tell. People like the Pope is there, but people don't really take his word and face I, value anymore. They question it. I'd argue that I don't know the religion ever was authoritarian. The governments were. Exactly. Yeah. So they 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 will cult cultize concepts and well the governments will weaponize, try to maintain social order, and the governments historically have been autocratic uh, monarchies authoritarian and uh there's also invasions and wars i mean when it comes to, like the inquisition there's also the point to bring up about the jihad and and i mean it's just a tumultuous violent time in general and i don't think it's the religion i think it's the politics and there's there's an overlap for sure don't get me wrong there are people who will use religion for their politi for political gain in any religion even in christianity but i think for the most part when you look at the United States and you look at the founding principles of it, you end up real, uh, realizing what I described as a weakness of Christians. They're too good of people. You, and, and, and it's true. This country was overwhelmingly Christian. And I had some Christian website really get mad at me for saying this, but I'll say it again. Christians are tolerant. They are tolerant of their neighbors. They turn the other cheek and they allowed very, very bad people to come in and start plaguing and terrorizing the country and the younger generations. And that's just... The reality yeah, tolerance is not necessarily a virtue this is something patrick bet david was talking about in miami when we had him on stage uh is that he used to pray for tolerance and he no longer does he'll pray for patience that's a virtue at least according to the catholics it's a virtue i'm 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 kind of with you i mean he I, and i should credit patrick bet david for the the core of what i said like what i was saying when i was like there's, there's too much tolerance that was like a speech patrick bet david gave to a standing ovation when he was like the, you know, Christians in this country are good people who who keep saying okay to these people being tolerant and allowing them to live the way they want to live. But then what happens is they push more into the institutions. They introduce dangerous, bad ideas. They start targeting kids. And now we're, we're, we're here where we are today. I wonder if that's intentional. I, there's that story, um, turn the other cheek. Jesus it was like, if you get smacked in the face, turn the other cheek. And it's like, I always took that as like, if they hit you, just be like, all right, whatever, hit me again if you want to. You're the you're the villain in the story. But then later, I learned like, no, it's because the Romans would wipe their butt with one hand. And it was like, uh, it was an insult to them to have to use their butt hand on someone. <laughs> is that, so so is Jesus was like, okay. yeah, use your dirty hand. Go it, show I, me. I, I do know that there are cultures right now where it's like your left hand, if you... It's your butt wiping. Yeah. Hand. So it was less about being tolerant of violence being appropriated at you. It was more about like make them, you know, denounce themselves if they're going to if they're going to act like that. I think, you know, we, we're talking about the Inquisition and things like that. And there were certainly brutal countries. But in a in a country that is a uh, classically liberal republicanist system is what the founding fathers wanted to create. They did have the expectation that this would only work if it was a moral religious society to a certain degree. Mm -hmm. And we, uh, we were, but more and more tolerance of opposing ideas and really bad ideas have persisted. What, like, what's your religious practice? How, how did you get into it? And th th this is fascinating for me to listen to you guys. And thank you for just, just um, breaking this down so that we can all 
have a better understanding of this. My understanding of, uh, of, of people who are, who are being tolerant and turning the other cheek um, is I see so many who are just tolerating evil, and that's not loving your neighbor. I mean, at the end of the day, the two great commandments of Christianity are to love God with all of your heart, mind, soul, and strength. And the second is like it is to love your neighbor as yourself. If you tolerate the kinds of things that bring misery to your neighbors and ultimately strip them of their liberties, you're not loving them. And I think that's where you have things like the just war theory. You have things like um, interposition, where the lower magistrates would interpose themselves uh, against the tyrants. Uh, and, and, and that's what we have with the Constitution, is we have limits for government powers so that we don't tolerate tyranny, either from the outside or from the inside. And that is uh, a very essential Christian virtue is to not tolerate that type of thing. Um, now, if, if you're gonna if you're gonna cuss me out and you're gonna you're gonna steal my my coat, uh, I might um, love you anyway and give you my shirt too. And in in doing that, sometimes people go, their conscience convicts them, and they come back around and go, why why do you do that? Why do you live that way? But you come after my kids, or you start stripping away our liberties, or you you make my my neighbors live in poverty and misery so that you can go live on Epstein Island. Uh, no, I think we shouldn't tolerate that. Thanks for watching this clip from the Timcast IRL podcast. Hang out with us live Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. and become a member over at Timcast.com for uncensored members-only shows exclusive. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll see you all next time.